We are Splash, a free youth arts workshop providing arts enrichment for low income urban youth. In this video, we show you how we draw an astronaut with colored pencils. Part one. Hello, 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 welcome, welcome. Come on in. This is Splash art class, free art class for you know, people who can't, maybe kids who can't afford to take art classes. But I'm your teacher, I'm your teaching artist, uh, Charlie Newton, and I'm glad to be here one more time uh, with you. I want to try to attempt to do something sort of complex today, so w we will start it today and hopefully finish it on Thursday, so uh, finish it next time. I want to do a drawing in color pencil, but I want to put a little bit more detail to show you and the possibilities that we have with color pencil. I'm going to use white paper. Um, a lot of times uh, artists will use gray paper or colored paper when using colored pencils or pastels because that the color of the paper will sort of, sort of act as a medium or mediate the, uh, the values for them. And that's a good way to do it. I don't want to do it that way because I want to show you know, what the possibilities are with color pencils. And um, so I'm gonna go into a little bit more detail than I normally would with color pencil. But uh, remember, for Splash students, remember, we're using the same principles that we have always used. So I'm gonna start off, I, I could sketch it with pencil first, and maybe I will, I don't know. I'm, let's decide later. I may sketch it with a uh, soft, with a hard lead pencil. So we're going to draw an astronaut. And um, this time I'm using some of my uh, more, uh, I guess a little bit more higher quality colored pencils. a lot of colors to choose from. These are the pencils that I use when doing my personal uh, artworks rather than teaching. So I may have to do a lot of sharpening. I think I may draw, draw it in with gray. So what I'm going to do is just sketch the basic shapes very lightly. You may not even be able to see it. And you know what? I may do a lot of it in gray, come to think of it. So what happens with me is once I start, then I start making decisions. Once I start. So the basic shapes I have down here. So I'm just trying to find a starting place for this drawing. So I'm doing the large shapes first. And uh, when I think I have a starting place, I, then I'll get started. I'm changing my mind a lot. I'm doing basically a gesture drawing here. And then I'm just going to go and draw the thing. So I have the basic shapes down. This here is the basic shape of the helmet. And his body is around here somewhere. And his face would be here. So let's, let's start. I notice his face is tilting like that. It's a slight tilt, so I need to remember to put that tilt in there. So I'm, right now I'm doing contour drawing and, 
and just to join. I'm still trying to find the form. The reason why I'm drawing this is I, I, I saw this picture probably a month ago and I wanted to draw it for a class and um, I just like the grays, the neutral colors and the simplification of the colors that's in this. And I thought this, hey, this might make a really good color pencil drawing. This is his eye, his right eye. Right there. So, now everything, I'm gonna let everything sort of, that I do from now, from this point on, I'm using this eye and I'm measuring. I'm still, I'm, you, you know, I'm always making change. Actually, you know, I'm always seeing something different. Every time I look at the picture, and I keep looking at the picture, I don't know if we could get a shot, a side view. Notice my head, the movement of my head. This is the movement. This is what should happen. Drawing is a very physical thing. Uh, color pencils are soft, so you can't really hear the pencil, whereas Graphite pencils are pretty hard, and you can actually hear the sc the pencil scratching the paper. But so one element of drawing is sound. The other element of drawing, physicality, physical element of drawing, is going to be movement. Your the way your body moves, your head keeps moving. I just measured. I wanted to know where this mouth ends, so I sort of did a quick measurement. If I drew a line straight down from the eyeball here, the pupil to here, this is sort of where this mouth ends. I think I want this mouth to be a little longer. So I'm always making changes. Never let, never be intimidated by your own artwork. <laughs> And never feel like, never be intimidated by the uh, picture that you're drawing, that you're using, or the model. So, as we've said many times, you can make changes and nothing's etched in stone. Anything can be changed. You can change your mind at any time. And it's okay. It's good to change your mind. So I see some things that I've done that I don't like already. And now I have to decide, is it worth making a change, changing it? So yeah, I'm gonna lower the nose. I've changed this nose. This is the second time I changed it. When you make one change, changing one thing changes everything. So lower the mouth, top lip. Now, no one would know this. If I put this in an art show, no one would know. I'm just, it's just for me. So whenever I'm making art, I'm making art for me for myself, and then if I decide to exhibit it, then I can, then it's for the public at that point in time, but uh, I'm not seeking, it's, it's nice to get uh, recognition from the public, but you never, you're not always gonna get that, so. 
Every time I see this nose, I see it different, differently. I'm doing everything I'm doing uh, freehand. So the, this photograph for you older kids, the photographer was trying to achieve a goal, but I'm not trying to achieve the same goal that the photographer was trying to achieve. I'm trying to make a state, some type of statement. And, and I'm not sure, I know I just like basically how the, the color graduations, the values, in this picture, this sort of attracted me to it. And um, even with pictures that you set up, models that you set up for yourself, for your individual work, there should be something that determines, I th well, this, in my opinion, there should be something that determines why. Ask yourself, why am I doing this? Now, as you're drawing, what's, what am I trying to say? What's the purpose of all this? And um, I believe that somehow that's going to translate to the finished product. So. One of the things I want to do is uh, show my individual approach to drawing and uh, so strokes are very important to me, lines and uh, so you see that I'll use lines a lot and I sort of resist smudging lines or smearing lines.
I've been in interested in astronauts since I was a child. So here's, now I wish I had a, uh, I wish I had my uh, triangle with me. I would use a triangle because I, I want a really thin edge. But, um, I can probably do it with the ruler. See, I'm moving the ruler while I'm drawing this edge here. It's easier to do it with a triangle. I'm just using my wrist joint to make this circle. So never be intimidated by the details. You just take your time and just draw one thing at a time. And just keep drawing until you're finished. Now, I think I'm going to Now this is good practice. This is not something that at this point in my uh, career, it's not something that I would normally draw, even though I like astronauts and you know, I like these type of images, but I wouldn't necessarily draw it. So now, I'm going to turn my paper to get the, the benefit. Now this is more like an egg-like shape though. Get the benefit of my wrist joint here. So I just turn the paper so I can use my, I'll go ahead and turn this too. But then it's kind of like stretches like an egg, egg-like shape. So by turning the paper, I get the benefit of this joint in my wrist, the circle that's in the wrist. So drawing complex things with a lot of detail is really good practice. So you, you don't want to find something, kids, that's easy to draw all the time. But just always draw what you want to draw. And, you know, it doesn't matter if it's hard or easy to draw. It does, that shouldn't matter. Because you're going to learn. We learn by mistakes. and. So you see, I'm changing lines here. So I'm, I'm still in sketch mode.
I don't have to draw every detail, but some details I need to draw. See, this circle flares out right in here. So I'm going to let that do that. It's, it's the things that are sort of like uh, interesting to me, I'm making sure that I uh, try to draw those, those things that's, that makes this thing interesting. So now, it's, it's, it, what am I thinking of? My mind is like I'm on a journey to a place I've never been before. And uh, I'm enjoying the journey. I don't know where it's going to end up. But I'm just trying to enjoy it and trying to enjoy the journey. So now what I'm going to do is sharpen, put a point on this pencil. trying to unearth a new eraser. <laughs> these things, they wrap these things good. And I want to use an old eraser because it's probably dirty. It's time to catch up if you join along with me. Oh, by the way, you can also use the eraser to clean your hands, your fingertips with. Okay, so back to it. I used to love sci-fi movies when I was a kid. especially space movies. You know, a lot of times when you decide to draw something, uh, <coughs> at least with me, I don't notice all the details at first. Again, I could use a, a uh, triangle right here.
is the line. Close enough. I'm not using the compass. I could use the compass here, but just, I really basically want to do everything freehand. Actually, if I if I would decide to use the compass, and uh, it would make this take longer to do. Like little details like this is not too important to me. But I just want to indicate that I see it. So it's good practice to draw things with a lot of detail. Practice for your eyes. So as I notice more detail, I'm, I'm drawing them in. So now I'm just indicating detail.
as you can see, I'm not going to get much color in this today, I don't think. There's not a lot of color in here anyway in this, in this picture. I'm constantly making changes. So hopefully I'll get the sketch down today. It's not much color anyway. Here's a line that uh, I don't want on here. I don't mind my sketch lines, most of them. I don't want that one. Uh, so just make it a little lighter. So I'm drawing what I think I see. If I wanted this to be exactly to scale, I would use one of the methods that I'm not going to show you guys right now of how to uh, transfer an image or blow up an image or, you know or project an image, I can project this, but you don't really, when you project, you don't really get a chance to, you know, if we did that, you wouldn't need much skill. The more skill you have, you can uh, make changes even when you're projecting, because you, you might say, well, that don't work. I don't like how that look, so. See how I'm changing this line? I put that line way down there. It shouldn't have been there. It should have been around here. It looks more accurate. Now, for my everyday practice, 
I'm, I'm really not going for realism. I'm going for a, like a uh, quasi, quasi realism so that you may know what, what the thing is I'm drawing, but it's not about uh, what, it, what it is. No, this one is more about, this drawing is more about, okay, what is it I'm trying to draw? But my everyday art is not so much about what the thing looks like. It's more about why am I drawing it? You know, what am I trying to say? So I'm going to, I think I'll do a, a few more drawings that, uh, that has details uh, so that you can see, get used to uh, practicing, uh, you know, in your practice you want to sometimes challenge yourself, you want to challenge yourself so that when it comes down to you um, expressing yourself, you have more tools to use. You know what to put in, what to leave out, because you can see. You can see what's missing. And make you can make decisions on whether you want to put that in. Like for instance, I really don't want to put, I may put some letters in, Aries, three, because it's there and it's so prominent, so obvious, but I really wish those letters weren't there, because to me, it don't, it really, <coughs> don't enhance the overall drawing yet, but I'll probably put it in because it's, I'll pr probably put those letters in because it's so obvious. And I'm not a calligrapher. I am exaggerating some of these lines, like this line here. I decided to exaggerate that line. Now, if I knew what this stuff was, this equipment was, I'd be able to draw it better. Okay, he's sitting in a chair. That's what that is. I do know what. So this is a, this is his seat belt here. This is his seat belt. This is a harness. He's harnessed in. Oh, yeah. I figured that out. It's metal. It's a metal seat belt. Keep his body from moving from all the G-force that he's going to have to uh, endure. And some of you kids know more about this than I do. Because you play little video games and
So I'm not going to put in all the details there. I'm going to leave some of that out so it can flow nicely, the picture. Like I was saying, I want the picture to flow nicely. So now I'm really trying to decide what's important. And what's not so important. So when I say the picture to flow, I want the lines, my lines to flow nicely. And I don't want too much. But too little is just as bad as too much. That's a So I'm going to take some artistic license in this area. So I'm making some heavy lines here. I want to show this heavy metal here. That this I want to indicate that this is uh, substantial. This is something that's substantial right here. Matter of fact, I might do it here too. This shape is like a football. So I make, I'm speaking to myself uh, in my mind. And I, and I noticed that I just thought this is like a football shape. So you have to tell yourself things like that.
again, if I just try to draw every line, everything, then the picture would, it's, it's kind of like looking at wallpaper, you know, it, all the, the lines are the same, you know, it's, it's boring, it can get really boring. So you want to leave out some things, you know. You, th you have a lot of tools that you can use, the, the hatch marks, the sketch lines. Uh, sometimes those things can make your picture a little bit more interesting. I mean, try to just draw everything for the sake of drawing everything. Uh, it can, you know, you may get some oohs and ahs but the picture basically would be boring. And for me, it gets boring. Because a lot of people, there are a lot of people who like, you know, it's just like, wow, you know, you can draw every detail. <laughs> but I like for the picture to flow. I like the lines to flow. I like it like a like song like a song like music maybe I'm going to stop in about 10 minutes or less. I'm not, I'm not going to put, I don't think I'm going to put too much color, any color. I'm just going to get the sketch down today. I'll put color in it later, next time. So if you want to just like get nothing but detail, and if you want your picture to be about the detail only and nothing else, uh, you could just project it. You can, you can project it and trace it. And that way you, you'll be sure to get all the details. Here's a, a mark I don't want. Now, I told, I tried to remind myself to tell you that a lot of times when I'm demonstrating, there are places that, you know, I could tell you, you could stop there and that's a, a certain style. I'm what's known as eclectic, so I may have two or three styles that come together to make one picture. And uh, I don't, do everything the same way. And what I'm trying to do is show you more of my style, even though I wouldn't necessarily draw this picture here <laughs> because, it, you know, it, it, I'm just doing this picture as a, uh, a teaching tool for you. But I could theoretically hit some of the lines on here like I did these, um, wider, darker lines, and um, hit some, some key, make some key marks here. And this could be the picture itself, just the drawing. With this gray, I'm using um, warm gray medium. That's the name of this color, uh, warm gray medium. I could stop it there, 
And, and this would be, you could display this as a picture, as a sketch, as a drawing. Uh, I plan to go further and add color. I, I, I really like hatch marks, so I think that's the strength. Everybody has a strength, and my strength is the ability to put a lot of colors together and keep them clean with paint. That's a strength that I discovered when I was a teenager. So it's good to know your strengths and, and weaknesses. One of my weaknesses is that I have astigmatism, so I'm not seeing things exactly level. But I know that, so I try to compensate for it. So it's good to know your strengths and your weaknesses and try to play off of your strengths. So color pencils, you, you will notice, it's very soft. Now, I'm using a uh, hot-pressed paper, 70, 70 pounds, so this is not a heavy weight. It's not too heavy, but it's not too light. 70-pound paper to do this. And it's hot-pressed, so it's pretty smooth. But my, these color pencils, these are really soft. These pencils are softer than what I gave Splash Kids, you know, what you would find. And so this, this one is more expensive than this one. So uh, sometimes um, um, your materials, sometimes choosing your materials become, can become pretty important with what results you get. That's why when uh, someone gives to Splash or we get a grant or something to buy art supplies, I always want to buy the supplies because I sort of know, you know, what a kid can use. You know, we don't have to have the most expensive, but we don't need uh, inferior supplies either. Those are decisions I like to make. I don't want to give Splash Kids just anything and expect them to do an awesome job. Now some people are so talented they can uh, use about anything. I'm going to stop in about five minutes. Well, I may stop it here. It may be easier to stop here. I am. I'm going to stop this right here. I'm going to stop it right there and go back in with color next time. I'm still gonna use this pencil. I'm gonna keep this, this gray out so that I'll know which pencil I used. Well, that's been another splash class. Um, be sure to join me next time and we're gonna to try to put color in here. Um, as always, it's been a pleasure and remember, art is for everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>